The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as religion, sports, aviation, business, literature, and politics. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they've been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Ines Dickens, who's the first vice chair of the New York State Democratic Party and has been a leader in the African American community for politics for many, many years. Hi, Ines. How are you doing today? Yeah, hi. How are you, Dr. Brown? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, we've been to a lot of things together, conventions Cut some and of those programs. Many, many years. And so <laughs> now, tell me, what is your involvement? current involvement in the presidential campaign? Well, as the first vice chair of the New York State Democratic Committee, which mm -hmm. is also the state party, mm -hmm. I have the responsibility of going around the state uh, to get out the word, to mm -hmm. bring people out to vote, mm -hmm. to encourage voter registration. Uh, I've been asked to go into other states, into what they call the battleground states. Mm -hmm. But New York, although the political pundits say it's not a battleground state. We have to work hard in New York State mm -hmm. to maintain our lead. Look at what's going on in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're on the set of CUNY TV, and you see it says Vote 2004. Uh, the university, as you know, the city university is the largest municipal university in the country, and we do a number of things to help people to become aware of issues in various areas, whether they be women's issues or labor issues or African-American issues, Latino issues. And so it's very appropriate that you're here talking about your role in getting out the vote. Now, getting out the vote really depends on the, not only registration and all of that, but also the public understanding the issues. If I would ask you what are the three most important issues in this presidential campaign, what would be your answer? Social Security. Mm -hmm. Health care, which mm -hmm. includes insurance, terrorism. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, uh, Congressman Rangel was on this program a few weeks ago, and I asked him, and he gave about the same answer that you did, and I asked him, why don't you say the war? Because terrorism is terrorism and needs to be combated, but the Iraqi war is the thing that has eroded the economy eroded the nation's credibility in the world, and many people are concerned about that. Now, what's your view in terms of the role of the war in the election decisions people are going to make? Well, the war is what the country is involved in now, but Americans are afraid of the terrorism mm -hmm. ongoing. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be attacked again mm -hmm. at home as we were during 9-11. So when we talk about the war, that's a very important segment because we're losing so many more mm -hmm. of our young men and women than uh, the uh, Bush administration is really admitting mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. and, and that the media is really putting forth. Mm -hmm. And and the we've spent almost 200 billion dollars in this right. war. Mm -hmm. And we've lost over 980 of our service people and non-service people mm -hmm. just since Bush declared mm -hmm. we won. Yeah. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Mission yeah. accomplished. Well, the thing that's very interesting as we hear these debates and the discussions, uh, many of the uh, people who support the war are saying the war was tied in with Al-Qaeda. Yet the evidence, printed most recent in the Times, indicates there was no relationship with al-Qaeda, that there was no nuclear threat. And yet we have some people, actually two of them African Americans, uh, Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell, projecting that. Do you think the public's going to believe that? Well, the public, it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to get that message across. You know, post 9-11, we were told by the Bush administration that it was Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. Iraq mm -hmm. had done this, mm -hmm. had bombed us at home, had, had caused us to lose over 
3,000 mm -hmm. people. I lost a cousin myself mm -hmm. at 9-11. At so it, it was heartbreaking. This was uh, uh, our commander in chief. This was the president of the United States at a time when we were so emotionally distraught. Uh, we were fearful. We, we, we didn't know where the attack was coming from. And he told us that he had proof that this is where it came from. Mm -hmm. It came from Iraq. And now we're finding, he said Iraq had mass weapons mm -hmm. of destruction. Mm -hmm. They haven't found them yet. Mm -hmm. And they're they won't. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah. There's no mass weapons mm -hmm. of destruction. Al-Qaeda, we're now finding out, was the one who attacked us. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened really with Kerry. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Kerry, uh, Senator Kerry, he voted for the war because mm -hmm. he one thing, he is, is a military man, mm -hmm. and so he was used to following the commander-in-chief. He was used to following the general, and, and, and we were being told that, that Iraq had done it, that Saddam had caused it and was f uh, f fueling the money and seeing to it that we were attacked. And then it t turned out that he wasn't. So Kerry had to, in all good conscience, when, we, when America finds out mm -hmm. that no mass weapons of destruction. It was not Saddam Hussein. It was not the Iraqi people. That in fact it was the Al Qaeda, and Al Qaeda was not occupying mm -hmm. Iraq okay. mm -hmm. prior to the. It, mm -hmm. Now that America is there, mm -hmm. Al Qaeda is all over Iraq, mm -hmm. and in fact causing deaths mm -hmm. to the non-military personnel mm -hmm. as well as to the military. Mm -hmm. So the American people deserve to know the truth. We, I'm an American, this is my country, I live here. I lost a member and the American people deserve to know that we were told a lie. And when you're being led into the jaws of hell, mm -hmm. then you have to, if you find out it's wrong, then you have to. It's up to your good conscience mm -hmm. to say, I cannot do this. Well, the question frequently comes to my mind is, who are the people who are supporting this? Uh, there are people in the Midway, they call what they call the red states, the Republican states, and the blue states, uh, the <laughs> Democratic states, but yeah. many of the Republicans, uh, Representative Chuck uh, Hagel, um, Dick Luger, they are very concerned about this as well. And some people say the whole purpose of this was to help the military industrial complex as epitomized by Halliburton to make some money. But the real problem is that we are so deep into Iraq, it's going to take us a while to get out of there. And um, the, uh, Kerry has proposed expanding the relationship of the international community, helping the Iraqis to really come forth and take some uh, control for themselves. But the Iraqis are so split among themselves. How do you think they're going to be able to, how are we going to be able to get out of this? We, America has caused such dissension in, in, in Iraq, it is going to take us years mm -hmm. to, to get out of there. It is, we're going to have to take the Iraqi people maybe out of Iraq to teach them how to, to run their country. Because if we don't, they're not learning it under a war-torn state. You mm -hmm. can't possibly if bombs are going off in mm -hmm. your ear. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's going to take years for us to get out. It's going to take money. We must, we must solicit the help of other nations. We mm -hmm. have lost credibility around the world. There is no one with us. No one has been with us, not one other nation except England. And Brown had to apologize to his, his own people. Blair, yeah. That's right. Tony, Tony Blair. Blair had to apologize to his own people yeah. for telling them a lie, mm -hmm. but a lie based upon what the Bush administration mm -hmm. had told him. One of the things that we're concerned about is the cost of this. Uh, in terms of economics, we just checked it uh, this morning. The national debt deficit is now $593 billion, down from a surplus of $350 billion when Clinton left office. The national debt is now $2.4 trillion. We have mortgaged the future of our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and our great-great-grandchildren. What can we do to get out of this? Because we know we have this tax cut. 
which has helped to contribute to that, yes, in is. addition to uh, $200 billion for the war in Iraq. What is the Democratic position on reducing the deficit at this Actually, time? Actually, it was more like a $5 billion mm -hmm. uh, projected surplus right. mm -hmm. that Bush inherited from President Clinton. Mm -hmm. And uh, note I said Bush because I don't consider him the our elected mm -hmm. president. Mm -hmm. um, and now the, the deficit that's projected is, is, is $3 billion. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take us three trillion. Years. Three, three trillion. trillion. I apologize. Yeah, these, these zeros take, yeah, get in the way. Yeah. <laughs> it is going to take us years, literally years, mm. to really get out of it because it's going to take um, uh, looking at the budget. Uh, you know, Clinton was able to do this in eight years mm -hmm. by careful uh, scrutiny, by uh, working with a Congress that no longer was was really with him, but it, it, he pr gave plans that made sense, mm -hmm. and he was able to turn it around. It, it's going to take another eight years. It's mm -hmm. not going to be done immediately, but a plan is being put forth on the table for Americans to consider, and we have to look at it because we cannot stand another four years of this. The interesting thing is that uh, when the Bush administration pushed through this tax cut, which mainly affected the rich and the super rich, mm -hmm. and sold it as though it's going to help uh, middle class people, and they got, I got a $300 check, you got one. <laughs> I started to send it back, but I said, that wasn't me any sense, so I invested it. I'm in too a, poor, I didn't get one. <laughs> I, I, I invested it in a, a social service organization. But the real question is, should we continue this tax cut? And if we don't continue, how will the average American, the middle American who says, well, they're cutting my taxes and they're making this country better, how are we going to sell the, the average American that we're going to have to cut out the tax cuts, particularly for the super rich, and maybe minimize some of the tax cuts that went to the middle class? How are the Democrats going to sell that? Because that's really what the Republicans what? are saying. The Democrats are, are spin and... Uh, uh, profit clip, uh, just spending money. And uh, they also want to take your money if we raise the taxes. Uh, what's the Democratic position on this tax cut? Doesn't it, doesn't it make sense to you that if you earn more money, that you pay more taxes? Mm -hmm. That you shouldn't have big business. You mean have by more it. money? You're not m m going from thirty-five to forty-five thousand. You talk no, about I'm going talking from about a hundred billion. I'm talking about yes, mm -hmm. and also you know big business. I'm not talking about the small businessman. I'm talking about big business. Halliburton, you know how many mm -hmm. tax cuts they get a year, mm -hmm. and it's unfair. Mm -hmm. It's unfair to the population. It's unfair to mm -hmm. all of us. Uh, if they cut that out, cut out big business and the super rich getting the tax breaks that they're getting, mm -hmm. it's going to put more money into the coffers, mm -hmm. which will allow us to look at mm -hmm. people, families who have children that are in college who are only earning fifty thousand dollars and under and under <laughs> and the, under the average that income in america is, is something is, like thirty thousand $30, dollars mm. and if we can give them a break on paying tuition for their children mm -hmm. if they're allowed to have a break in in paying health insurance mm -hmm. if we can give them a break in prescription drug payments mm -hmm. such as allowing drugs to come in from Canada, mm -hmm. then it, you can work out a balance. It's not going to mm -hmm. be done overnight. It's going to be very difficult. It's going to mean everyone is going to have to tighten their belts. But we have to do it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you say everyone needs to tighten their belts. But of course, the super rich have much larger belts to tighten. And they don't <laughs> lose. But when, when middle class <laughs> folks uh, have to tighten their belt for college tuitions, for health care, uh, th that that clearly is a problem. Now, in terms of your voter registration and voter turnout activities in New York State and other places, what's really the strategy behind voter registration and voter turnout? Voter, we have to register. And by the way, Democrats have 
outpaced Republicans in registering people to vote in this general election. Well, we need two things. Way, they got they got to register, and they then got go to, out vote, to vote, and then they got to be counted. Because <laughs> yeah, yes. one of the concerns is That's what right. happened in Florida and other places. That's right. Our electoral system is so antiquated that it can be manipulated. Well, I'm glad you talked about that antiquated system because now, by 2006, all the states has to have HAVA, Help America Vote Act, mm -hmm. in place with the electronic mm -hmm. voting machines, which hopefully they have to have paper back. There have have to be a trail. Right. And so, they, uh, you know, I don't care what machines they get because all of the companies that manufacture the machines are Republican mm -hmm. owned anyway. So I just want them to have a paper trail where you get a receipt mm -hmm. and also in the Board of Elections would have a paper right. trail mm -hmm. so that w when there's a recount it can be done. In addition, the Democrats are now on top of the fact of what happened in Florida mm -hmm. in, in, in 2000. That they, the recount was a miscount mm -hmm. and, and it was taken from us, taken from the, the vote of the people. And supported by the Supreme Court. And supported by the Supreme Court, which is another issue. Senator Chuck Schumer has been working hard and fighting hard that these ultra conservatives will not take over our Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And we've got to keep him and 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 the Senator mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton there to be on the forefront of that battleground because mm -hmm. that Supreme Court, that is that is our only protection. Yeah, the Supreme Court That's eliminated right. segregation. That's right. And well, that's establish the rights protection. of all of women. That's right. That's gay our population. only protection. And uh, that really is a key. That's really the hidden issue in this election mm -hmm. because, as you say, Iraq's going to take a long time to get straightened out. The economy's going to take a long time. But the real key issue is that in the next four years, there'll be at least two reappointments on the Supreme that's right. Court. And hopefully we will not have an ideologue, a right-wing ideologue, mm -hmm. to be there. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a very, very mm -hmm. interesting thing. Mm -hmm. The issue about stem cell research, research, the issue about abortion, those are issues that the right wing, the conservatives, That's are right. pushing. And they'll and use the Supreme Court. I understand Court. that uh, the Bush campaign has actually enlisted some black ministers uh, they give them money for programs in their churches, and they say that the black ministers are against same-sex marriage, they're against abortion, and so on. That's an interest. That's somewhat new for the black community, because basically the black community has a, a wide berth of opinions, but they tend not to want to be doctrinaire and tell people how to live their lives. Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting. Well, so they say about, about some of the ministers, I don't know any. Yeah, we well, neither do. <laughs> That's right. Now, tell me, uh, you the first vice chair of the New York State Democratic Committee. What's happening in New York State with the upcoming elections? Well, now, uh, New York State hopefully will continue to go Democratic mm -hmm. for the president. And I think it will, but we've got to work at it. It's mm -hmm. not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And we can't lay down and say, oh, we'll take it for granted. Because if people it, don't show up, the uh, other important. side we, might show up and one, vote them. Right? One part of it is the registration, which, by the way, and it's very important that I get this across, uh, Friday the 9th of October is the final day for mail-in of your voter registration mm -hmm. forms. So mm -hmm. I want to get that across because mm -hmm. that's very, very important. Now, the Board of Elections within New York City are having a voter registration. They had it yesterday at various schools mm -hmm. around the, the city in the, in the five boroughs and again on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now Saturday is the 10th, but if you register at one of those schools, those people that register will be permitted to vote in, in mm -hmm. the general election in, on November the 2nd. Well, actually this program will air someone, sometime after Saturday, but the message is very clear get people to register, and more importantly, get them to vote. Now, what's mm -hmm. going to be the motivation to get all these new people that you registered to come out to vote? How you, they've signed up. Now, what are you going to do on Election Day to get them out to vote? Well, 
on election day, part of it is we use sound, mm -hmm. we use people on the street mm -hmm. to hand out literature, to encourage. We use a lot of young people because young people, the money has been cut to the colleges. Mm -hmm. So they see, they're fearful. We're all fearful. Mm -hmm. So that has been the motivating factor to get so many people to work. Uh, my sister was up at City College with a mm -hmm. group of, of women uh, from the uh, business and professional women. Mm -hmm. um, the New York chapter, and they stayed up there day after day to mm -hmm. register the young people up on City College campus to get them to register and to encourage them to come out and vote. Mm -hmm. And in fact, several of the professors brought their classes mm -hmm. out to learn about it. And, and uh, a lot of people have now joined my club. Mm -hmm. And the key word, I'm afraid of Bush. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the key word I keep hearing. And that is something that they, you know, that's true. Well, see, the election is not just about the president. There are a lot of local races, right. congressional races. That's right. And the, you know, almost as though the old expression, you got to be in it to win it. Okay. And that means being in it is to vote. Now, we have these uh, machines in New York State where you pull the lever down, and mm -hmm. sometimes the machines. Uh, misfunction, malfunction, mm -hmm. and they have a right to have a paper ballot. I think uh, Assemblyman Keith Wright, who heads the election committee for the assembly, was mm -hmm. on this program a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he was talking about the importance of continuing to vote even though the machine yes. is not working and make sure your paper ballot counts. And then the question is, you've uh, been on the election campaign and you've uh, been on the committees, uh, how are we sure that those paper ballots are going to get counted? Well, uh, right after the, the election, uh, within that week, um, all the votes are canvassed, including the paper ballots, mm -hmm. including absentee ballots. Canvass means counted. Counted, including absentee ballots, which um, could be people who are uh, out of the city or out or of the, the country. Uh, that's a military ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, but the absentee ballot is also used for those people who have a difficulty getting physically challenged and they mm -hmm. cannot get to their polling site. Mm -hmm. And those are counted. And each campaign, not just the presidential campaign, for instance, Congressman Charles Rankle, he has a Republican opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we will be at the Board of Elections when those paper ballots are canvassed, mm -hmm. counted, to ensure that everyone is indeed counted. Mm -hmm. Same thing for, for Senator uh, David Patterson, who is the Senate uh, leader, the Democratic Senate leader. He has a Republican opponent. Mm -hmm. He will have uh, mm -hmm. people from his campaign there to ensure. Assemblyman Keith mm -hmm. Wright, you spoke about him. He has a Republican opponent. Mm -hmm. Same thing for him. Well, of course, you're raising the, the point that politics is about participation. Participation by people like you and me and the average citizen. Mm -hmm. And you have volunteers. These people who are watching these counts uh, are really not getting paid. They may be paid when they're actually at the, the uh, table, when they're taking in the votes yes. and checking mm -hmm. people in. But basically, they are volunteers. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to ask you, African American, why should African Americans be more active in politics now than they ever were before? You know, someone did ask me that. And the first reason for me and that I give young people is that my ancestors died for me to have this right to vote. They were strange fruit, not just on southern trees, mm -hmm but on northern trees as well. And I do not want to forget mm -hmm. my history. I do not intend to allow my family or anyone that I can reach out and touch to ever forget that we died for that right. Mm -hmm. And politics is the key to our entire lives. And that's what we've got to begin to understand as African Americans. You do not get a post box on your corner. Mm -hmm. You do not get a street light on your corner. You do not even get the stripes in the street for the, for the crosswalk. 
without politics. Politics governs our entire lives from uh, the time we're born with a birth certificate till we die with a death certificate. And once we clearly understand that, then it's no way we can avoid voting in any election. Well, see, Ines Dickens comes from a political heritage. Your father, Lloyd Dickens, who's a great friend of ours, a Democratic Thank leader you. in the community with great dignity, uh, he led the way, and you're doing a great job of Thank following you. in Lloyd's tradition. Thank and you. those of us who really believe in politics, regardless of party, do feel that it's imperative that we, African Americans, continue the tradition that we struggle for, which means we've got to reach to the youth. What are you doing to reach the youth? I have started, f and you know, when you talk about reaching to the youth, by the way, I know you can't vote till you're 18, but we've got to start reaching out to the youth at, at, at a younger age, at seven or eight. They no longer teach civics in these public mm -hmm. schools. And for instance, at my club, the Martin Luther King uh, Democratic Club, several of the members, uh, Margaret Jackson, Camille Lane, uh, Earl uh, Keller, several of them have gotten together and they have a class once a month on Saturday to begin to That's, educate. That really is the way in which to keep our young people yes. involved. Today on African American Legends, we were talking with Ines Dickens, who is the first vice chair of the New York State Democratic Party, and we've gotten a great history lesson, and we've gotten a lot of a motivation Thank for you. how we all should be involved in voting, and we should vote in 2004.